Sabah al khair. Right now we're going to talk about the five names or five nouns in Arabic, as they're called al asma al khamsa. This is a very small group of nouns that show their case endings in formal Arabic as long vowels attached to the end of the word when they're in an idafa or when they take most possessive pronoun suffixes. You know some plural case endings where the wow or the ya yeah can change to something else because of the case, but all of these nouns are singular and this operation pretty much only happens in the singular, as we will see. So, luckily for us, there is kind of some vowel harmony here because we know that a normal singular noun on a marf, if it is in the marfua case, if it's the subject of a jumla ismiya, for example, is going to take a dhamma or two. And here we attach a wow to the end of these words. So, if I were talking about Ab or akh, two words that you probably know, dad or brother, and I had it in an idaf, I would say akhu. Similarly, in the mansub, we can expect a fatha or two, and we have an alif here, so the sound is the same. A, a, short a, long a, basically. And as you might expect with the majroor, on a normal singular noun, we would have some combination of one kasra or two and instead we have a long ya attached to it. Again, that's only when we see these words in idafat or if they have almost all pronoun suffixes, possessive suffixes attached to them. So, for example, if I wanted to say, I saw your brother at the office. I saw Ra'aytu, your brother. Now, ordinarily, if we didn't know any better, we could just take the word akh and add a kaf. But because akh is one of these special nouns, I need to demonstrate the case, which is mansub because the brother is the object of the verb saw, right? So it would turn out Ra'aytu akhaka. Because I have that pronoun suffix, it's obligatory in formal written Arabic to include that alif. Let's take another example. Um, if I wanted to say, I spoke with his father, I could do it this way. I spoke with his father. Now here I have a preposition. So I know that after a preposition in Arabic, I'm going to have a noun in majroor, which means I'm going to take ab and then put it in this special majroor case, which means I'm going to add a ya. And the ya is going to be what changes. Takalamtu ma'a abi. I spoke with his father. If we change that to an idafa, if we wanted to say, whose father? Well, I spoke with Adam's father. I would say, Takalamtu ma'a abi Adam. So instead of attaching that pronoun suffix, I would keep the ya. The ya is important, and just add whatever noun completed my idafa at the end. One final example, if I wanted to say, he is the father-in-law of Maryam. These two nouns, you know, ab and akh, ham means a male-in-law, a father-in-law, fam in its forms means mouth. Notice that it loses the meme when we have it in these different forms. And dhu has to do with possession. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But if I wanted to say, he is Maryam's father-in-law. He is the father-in-law of Maryam. 
Huwa, well, here I have a jumla ismiya. There are no verbs, there are no prepositions. So it would be in marfua. Huwa, oh, excuse me. Hamu. Maryam. And because this is an idafa, I see that case ending on the noun here. Fam, a word that might be less familiar to you than aburach, means mouth. And you'll notice that it's sort of distinctive in that the meme that we see when it's not in an idafa or in a possessive construct. Excuse me, yes. The meme when it's not in a possess possessive construct is cut off when it's in an idafa or when it is attached to a pronoun suffix. So we say fu fa fi in these particular situations. Uh, we could classicize a little bit. There's an expression in Arabic uh, that essentially means don't say bad things. Jannib fak qawlasu. Sort of make your mouth avoid the saying of bad, if we wanted to translate it literally. Jannibfak, so it comes from a root that means avoiding, but in this case it's a form two verb, meaning prevent or make someone or something avoid things. So don't say bad things, essentially. Jannib fag qawlasu. And because fam mouth here is the object of jannib, it needs to be mansub, so we have our alif there. Note that the first person singular ending, when we attach a ya to the end of a word, swallows up these endings. That's the one exception. That's why I said most pronoun suffixes, but not absolutely all of them. If I wanted to say, my brother likes ice cream, I could say it like this. Akhi yuhib al -buza. If we were following these rules, we might expect Ahu plus the ya, but that doesn't happen. The e sound is strong enough that it swallows up the wow. Another way to think of it is that Arabic in general really does not like the vowel combinations of ui and iu, neither of which sound particularly pleasant, right? Ui kind of sounds like you bumped the corner of a counter with your solar plexus, and you kind of sounds like you stepped on something cold and wet. They're unpleasant vowel combinations generally, right? They're not as easy on the ears. So, a hui, not going to happen. <clears throat> our final word, the final name in our five names, al asma, al khamsa, is zu. And zu is unique in a couple of ways. Zu is a word that we're only ever going to see in an idafa construct. It kind of means having or possessing. And it serves a function similar to other words that you know to express possession, like ind or li. But zu is typically reserved for physical attributes, like having blonde hair or blue eyes, for example, or abstract qualities. Someone who has a lot of administrative experience or has a great knowledge, something like that. So if we wanted to say, do you know the man who has black hair, the man with the black hair, we could express it using vu. Do you know the man? Now here, Rajul is the object of ta'rif. Do you know the man? So it's mansub. We would add a fatha there if we were vocalizing our entire sentence. 
and then because rajul is mansub the al-aswad do you know the man possessing black hair You'll notice that I've put a little asterisk here. That's because Lu is unique among these Asma Khamsa, these five names, in that it also changes depending on the number and gender of what it's describing. We have separate versions of Lu for feminine singular, for masculine plurals, for feminine plurals. For now, the important thing is to recognize it, but if you're curious, there is a separate video on the vagaries and idiosyncrasies of Lu and how it works. The important thing for now though, to recognize it when you see it and to know that it is one of these five names, all of which function in the same similar or regular pattern. If you need a refresher on when exactly a noun is going to be marfu'a or mansub or majrur, we have separate videos on all of those case endings that you can go back and watch.